Hi everyone, I'm going to give you a little tutorial about the PRI student resource area as well as specifically your Learn Library. So if you go into Canvas and you click on the PRI student resource area, which is looks and feels like a setup of a course, this is the first area that you will come to. This is going to have your institutional catalog and clinic a handbook once you get to that time, um, information about medical records, even though you've already turned those in, you do have to keep up to date with certain items like your TDAP it has to be done every 10 years. So it is up to you as a student to say, hey, I got that done in you know, 2020, so I, I'll be good throughout the duration of the program, or mine expires you know, April of 2023, so you need a new one. So just kind of reviewing those medical records and items that need to be updated as you're in the program. Then you have some resources here, Canvas, how to navigate. It's gonna show you different items on how to na navigate through Canvas. So it's just a short little video. I highly suggest watching that one. Then we're gonna go to um, some tips and tricks for adult learners. You know, some of you guys have not been in college school for a while and or, or maybe you have and you've just never heard of these tips and tricks. So as adults, you know, in especially in distance learning, we are not going to a classroom for six, seven, eight hours a day, learning stuff, going home, you know, doing homework and coming back the next day. So we do have to treat this uh, quite differently. So I have two different areas here. Um, one is specifically for adult learners, kind of taking it back to basics of how do we learn? And then distance learning tips and tricks since we are in this online environment. And I do want to mention that both of these are backed by research. These are not my personal um, opinions, even though I do believe in all of this. These are all backed by research. And then netiquette. This is very important as we are in an online form. Um, you know, etiquette is governing communication on the internet. That's simply what it is. So there is a PDF here kind of to explain, you know, netiquette and what's expected as we will be communicating and you will be communicating with your peers um, through this online forum and courses, the entire program. And then learn. Specifically, we want to talk about learn and I'm going to come back to this because this will be your learn orientation as well. So let me go through the other items and then we'll come back. Proctor Free. Proctor Free is an auditing tool. This is how we show um, our accreditors. This is how we know as instructors, as the institution, as well as keeping all the students honest, um, is how we know our academic integrity. So, you know, being that you're online and you're taking a quiz, we cannot see you. We do not mandate you do it as a certain time. We're not watching you. We want to make sure that Essentially, you're not cheating. It's academic integrity. You're not using your book and your notes and you're not Googling the answers. Um, you know, you have to rem remind yourself and remember that at the end of this program, you will be sitting for a national board registry for MRI to become a certified technologist. We're teaching you all the curriculum to ensure that you pass those boards. But if you continuously look up and seek out answers when you shouldn't be using your book or notes and you're constantly, you know, gaining answers by what we do consider to be, um, you know, not having academic integrity, then you're not going to pass the boards. And that's the whole goal here. You cannot get a job without your boards. So we want to make sure that we are upholding the best of all academic integrity so that you know, when people see our institution in our game, they know that you're getting the good curriculum, but that we are also checking in on that academic integrity. So Proctor Free will be used for all midterms and finals, as well as any other quizzes that we see fit to, um, to add it to. So technology requirements for this are listed in the institutional catalog. You have to have a camera that's working, that's mandatory, and you must have um, speakers that are working. So here is a practice quiz. You will see that there is a practice quiz in most all your courses, but if not, you can always come here. What this does is allow you to take, um, and you're not going to take it from this place, but it allows you to take a quiz, which is not graded. There's really no questions, um, but it walks you through proctor free, setting up your computer, making sure everything is working before you use it for the first time. If, if it, a midterm, a final exam, or any quiz is requested by your instructor to be done using Proctor Free and you do not use Proctor Free, it will be a zero. There is absolutely no ifs, ands, buts, anything about it. Your technology has to work. 
So for Proctor Free, there's some resources here. Please click on it. There's a little guide and a little video, very short and sweet. It's very easy to use. What you as the student will use if their quiz is asked to be done with Proctor Free, instead of clicking on it here, you are going to go to Proctor Free Student Portal. You're not going to see all these other. I can see these as the instructor here. So if we go to student view, this is more of what you're going to see. And if you go to Proctor Free Student Portal, it is going to ask you, do you want to authorize Proctor Free? Because it's an external app, you have to select authorize. And then in here, I don't actually have it set up. So let's go back and set it up first. Let me exit out student view. So I will be sure to um, set that up and then we will be able to, to do that in, in this course. So that's a little bit about Proctor Free. Um, to help with uh, plagiarism and then academic integrity that has to deal with plagiarism, we have a slide um, compilation here that was done by Dr. Diaz, who teaches our communications course. So be sure to review this. And then also a submission area for turnitin.com. So you have these in most of your courses as well, um, but you have an area here to, to look at that. I know that we've sent out messages um, in the courses about using turnitin.com. Um, and all you have to do is simply click on here and then you, in the student view, it's going to allow you um, to uh, copy and paste your material there. In this uh, PRI student resource area, this is giving you information about turnitin.com. And then right here, if you go to the student resource, it'll tell you how to navigate through your report that you receive. So very important to look over that as well. So let's go back before we get to learn. <clears throat> Your course uh, list and book list will be listed here every semester. So right now, the January 2023 semester, for those of you who are new in the cohort, the cohort that just started in January, this was emailed to you. Um, it was emailed to you about four weeks prior to the start, or it was emailed to you once you were accepted if it was um, under that four week start. Course schedule, this is how your course schedule will go. Um, if you do not, I mean, if you pass every course successfully every semester, then this is how it will go. It is important to note that this can change. And if this change, we will update you. But currently these are the first four courses, then there's a two week break. Then you take these four courses and there's a two week break. Then in semester three, you start clinic and you take two courses with clinic. Then there's a three week break, but it's to note that three week break, this is only if the semester started in January. This three week break is always during August. It's that August break before that September, late August start. So this is showing a curriculum sequence if a student started in January, but if you started in April or if you started in August, just remember the three week break is always that one in that end of August, September time. Then you will continue, continue clinic throughout the entire rest of the program until you complete your clinical hours. So if you go 40 hours a week and you complete it, you know, in six months, then you'll be done with clinic and you'll just finish your courses. The minimum number of hours for clinic is set at 16 hours a week. You do complete clinic even during the breaks, but that will get you to the minimum number needed by the end of graduation. Okay. So Semester three, you have clinic and two courses. Semester four, you continue to have clinic and then you have four courses. So that's a heavy semester. And then your very last semester, you continue to have clinic and you have three courses, all right? So let's go back. And then as far as the book list that I mentioned here, I will update this book list about five, four to five weeks prior to each semester start date. And I will email everyone letting them know that it is updated. So you will come here moving forward to always check your book list for the next semester. Books are mandatory. If it's on this list, then you need your book. If it's on this list, you need your book by week one because we start the courses. We have 15 weeks and we start using the book from day one. Okay. So getting into LEARN, because I definitely wanted to go over LEARN and what that is, LEARN is our online library. 
So you're going to have a learn tab in every single course. You do not need a log on or anything. You'll just click it and go straight there. Okay. Some instructors will have you use learn um, to research any topic they give you, maybe for to write a paper. You can use it for anything you would like to as well. So keep that in mind. Instead of walking into a library, we now have learn. Here are some resources directly from Learn, and then I will open up Learn as well and show you. So ask a librarian. Um, if you need help, this is kind of talking about how to ask a librarian something. Um, if you've never used an online library search engine before, this is going through how you actually um, do a basic search within Learn. And then if you're looking for something very specific, this will talk about how you do an advanced key search and then sharing, saving and sharing your results. And so you can go through a few more of these um, audios and videos, and it will talk about how to use Learn. Really simply though, these four should help you out. It's the most that you're gonna be using are these four topic areas. Um, but just so you know that there are some resources there for you. Now let's go into Learn itself. So Learn Library and every single course will be on this left column. Once you click it, it's gonna bring you to the front page. So you can see it is our library. Now here, what this does is it breaks it down um, by categories. So you can search something immediately here like MRI safety, and let's spell it correctly, MRI safety. And that's gonna bring up in every search engine resource that Learn utilizes, it will bring up um, anything that has to do with MRI safety. So here you can see that um, there's about 16,000 results found. So we would have to be a little bit more specific because this was a very broad search. But just to give you an idea, this will pull up and then you click what you need to click on. Now let's go back to just the regular page here. Um, another way to search is to go to the category area. So if this is something health and medical, because we're looking at stuff that has to do with MRI, these are all the different journals and books and um, resource areas that we can search through that have to deal with just health and medical. So let's say your instructor tells you to, you know, look up something about some kind of MRI equipment. You might want to try to do a search specifically and just allied health. So we could just say MRI, which will probably yield quite a bit, but we will see. And you can see it's very quick. And then you also have these um, filters up here that you can use. So peer reviewed, um, if your instructor wants that, if you want certain dates, um, if there's a certain type, like you only want something that's an article or audio, um, specify your language to English or whatever you want the, the language to be. And then you can see here, see almost, I mean, close to a million results because it pops up anything that has MRI in it. So always make sure you're very specific, and that's where some of these other instructional videos can help out as far as the basic search and then the advanced search. So very easy to use, but if you've never used it before, then you'll, you'll kind of see that um, it can be a little tricky to kind of start, a little overwhelming, um, but really it's just a general search engine that happens to be an online library. So that is a proc or I'm sorry, that is Learn Library. Little orientation quick for that. Um, just make sure you check out this area. We will update things here on a regular basis as we see fit. Um, make sure too that you have any of your notifications turned on. You can do that simply by going to your profile, going to notifications, and then changing those to be sent to you based on an email or what have you so that you do not miss out on anything within Canvas in any of your courses. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, please always reach out. Do not hesitate. And we will speak to you all soon.